I'm probably not so good to stay. <laughs> All right. Um, if you'd like to get your Bibles out and open to um, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, if you would. I'm not going to read from there straight away, but. So, uh, you've probably heard the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You've probably heard that saying, I'm sure you have. Um, it basically means, I sort of looked up some uh, definitions, you know, don't risk everything by committing to one plan or idea. Don't invest or commit all of your resources into a single venture, opportunity or goal, which can be risky, because if that thing fails, everything can be lost. It's often used to advise against, depending on a single person or a single plan of action for success. And I'm in finance, I've been working in finance for over 40 years, and it's a good sound principle. Um, it talks here about things being risky, things being uncertain. You don't know what's going to happen. And the risk comes for that exact reason. Risk is an uncertainty about something that's going to happen in the future. So if you put all your money in the in shares and the stock market crashes, so do you. If you put everything you have in property and the property bubble bursts, as it will do, so do you. You're going to crash and burst as well. And so it makes sense to diversify, to try other avenues, to look for alternatives. Um, because those things, like stock markets and property bubbles and that sort of thing, are completely uncertain and we have no control over them at all. None of us have any control over those things. And so there's a lot of uncertainty. So we diversify, don't we? In fact, uh, don't turn to this, but in Ecclesiastes, there's a verse that uh, uh, sort of talks about that a bit. It's Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1. It says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Uh, give a portion to seven and also to eight. Split it up. For you know not what evil shall be upon the earth. And so you read scriptures like that, and it seems that the Bible is giving a similar type of advice. Cast your bread, but split it into, into portions. Um, because you don't know the evil that shall be on the earth. There's risk, there's, there's outcome. And that's, that's the important bit about that bit of a verse there. The reasons that you do these things is because of uncertainty and the risks associated with the world. And so a question sort of comes out of that, an argument comes out of that. Um, if you could find something that had certainty, that had no risk of failure, that could never go wrong, Shouldn't you put all your eggs into that basket? Because the only reason that you split your eggs up is because of uncertainty and the fear of something going wrong. But if you could find something that didn't have any risk of failure, that was completely certain, then put your eggs into that basket. <laughs> Do that. So if you can turn to Matthew 26, you're probably there. Verse 37, uh, and he, that's Jesus, took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and finds them asleep and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again 
and prayed the third time. He did it again, saying those exact, uh, exact same words. And he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that does betray me. We know the story well, of course. We'll have a communion time tomorrow to remember uh, to remember those things and that and that time. But Jesus, he put all his eggs in one basket. The difference is, he didn't put them in his basket. He put them in your basket. Gave everything for you. He took everything that he had. Bobby sort of alluded to it a little bit today, didn't he? And he said, I'm going to give it to you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we were strangers to him, he goes, here's all the eggs. They're in your basket. That's what I'm going to do. The Old Testament, the tabernacle, all of those things, of course, are all coming together to this, to this point and the resurrection later on. Because Jesus was prepared to do all, to give all, to fulfil all for you and I. He put on sin in all its forms so that we've got this opportunity now to have a relationship with the Lord. How do we have this relationship with him? Only by the Spirit. Only by the sacrifice that Jesus came to do. Um, he knew what he was doing, of course. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He's not sort of fumbling around here. He knew exactly what was going to um, happen. And in one sense, what he did was he took uncertainty out of the picture and said, well, I'm going to put all my eggs in your basket so that you can put all your eggs in my basket, in God's, in God's uh, basket. And we can do it with confidence. No risk, no failure, because he's done it all for us. Put all those eggs in his basket. Now if you go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 17, 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 17, it says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded and will trust in uncertain riches. The uncertainty of riches is what it's talking about. Don't trust in those things, but trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, they, that they may lay hold on eternal life. That verse uh, 19 there in the Amplified is very good. It says, in this way, laying up for themselves the riches that endure forever, a good foundation for the future, so that they may grasp that which is life indeed. And so why would we trust in something with an unsure outcome? Why would we trust in a building with a faulty foundation. If you thought this building had a faulty foundation, you wouldn't be very happy sitting over this arch of, uh, of steel above your head. You trust it's going to stay up because you are confident uh, in, in the foundation. Why not? And the Bible puts this to us. Why not lay up treasure in heaven? Why not put our efforts into things that we know are certain? A 100% return, 100% of the time. If you could get that uh, in the financial world, there would be people clamouring for that. But it doesn't exist. In the world, you're just not going to get that. Where are you going to find that certainty? Only in the Lord. Years ago, there was a saying, uh, you can take it to the bank. Who remembers that? You can take it to the bank. And what it means is, it's a certain outcome. I don't think you can say that about banks anymore, can you, about taking it to the bank? <laughs> that could be one of the most risky things you can do. But anyway, um, uh, you, you, you 
can't do that in the world. Where are you going to have this certainty? Only in the Lord. Talk about grasping that which is light indeed. I love that word. Grasping. It's not like they're just sort of going, oh, let's see if I can hang on. No, no, no. We are grasping on with everything we have. We are holding on for dear life with everything we've got because all our eggs are in the basket, hopefully. So we hold on with everything we've got. What kind of eggs you got? Prayer, meetings, fellowship, camps. Brothers and sisters encouraging you in, uh, in times of storm. Testimonies from people. These are our eggs and we're putting them in the basket. We hear things from people we, we've only met yesterday. There are people in this room that I have known for 40 years. There are people in this room that I've known for 24 hours. And yet, we have that bond, don't we, through the Spirit. It's quite an amazing, uh, amazing thing. In, uh, I'll just read this. In Psalm 22, the Lord says this, Have not I written to you excellent things in counsels and knowledge, that I might make you to know the certainty of the words of truth, that you might answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. And in Psalm 37, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. How do we know the certainty of the word of truth? Are we smarter than everyone else? I don't think so. How do we know these things? Because we put all our eggs in Jesus Christ. Because he put all his eggs in in us. You read the Bible and it's full of shalls and musts and will. You don't really read about maybe, could be, maybe I'll think about doing that. No, you don't read about that. You read about, you read about the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this quite often in the Bible. And so People think it's a book of grey areas and it's a bit sort of fuzzy. We know that's not right. It is a book of certainties. We have a book of certainties. You want to find out the outcome? Here it is, right here. Is it going to change? No. The rule's going to change? No. The goalpost's going to move? No. He says what he says. As we put our eggs in, those, in that basket, we're certain because we're sure of it. At the beginning there, one of the little uh, definitions was, it's often used to advise against depending on a single person or plan of action for success. In the Lord, that of course is totally wrong. We are part of a great plan and we're in it 100%. Boots and all, as it were. Our advice would be, of course, depend 100% on Jesus Christ if you want to achieve spiritual success because you're not going to find success in the world. There's no success out there. Oh, there might be little bits of happiness here and there and, you know, every 30 or 40 years your football team might win something, uh, all these sort of things. But you know what? There's no, there's no real lasting anything out there. Where's the lasting anything? It's on the straight and narrow way. Also known as the only way. It's the only way. Um, it's the only plan with certain success. You might go off a little road this way, or a little road that way, and a little, little deviation here and there. They're all dead end streets. They might even look as if they're nicely paved. Look at that. That street's just been relayed. Really nice. But it's the way of death. You want to achieve success, you want certainty. The straight and narrow way. Put your eggs in that basket. Go down that road because that's where you'll find uh, that uh, that certainty. The Lord said, "I've written my word on your heart, that you'll know it, that you'll understand it, that it'll be revealed unto you in a way that you won't just get just from uh, reading something. He reveals His truth uh, to us." Um, You'll never go wrong putting your eggs in that basket. How does he describe us? The head, not the tail. 
Why are we the head and not the tail? Because we're great, we're strong, we're smart. None of them things. We're the head and not the tail because our eggs are in his basket. That we put ourselves 100% to the Lord there if we're obedient to him. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 6. I think my clock's wrong too, Pastor Ben, I'm sure. But it's certainly positive. Anyway, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. I'm going to read from the Amplified again. This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God ever to prove false or deceive us, <laughs> we who have fled to him for refuge might have mighty indwelling strength and strong encouragement to grasp and hold fast the hope appointed for us and set before us. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. A hope that reaches further and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. I'll never leave you, he said, never forsake you. We read he's not a man that he should lie. And so we grasp and hold on to that hope with everything we have. It's sure. There's no risk to it. Is there any chance of failure if we're trusting in the Lord? No chance of failure. So why wouldn't we gravitate towards that and lay our treasure in heaven? Talks there about an anchor of the soul. Sometimes you'll go through a storm. Uh, I've got some experience in this area, as it turns out. Um, it'll keep you steadfast. It'll keep you on the right track if all your eggs are in that basket. When Jesus returns, we're going to enter into what it says there, the very certainty of his presence. Because we have a hope that we know. We don't have our fingers crossed. You know, gee, I hope it's all true sort of thing. We know it's true. Having found the certainty of the words of truth, the power of God dwelling in us, it's a sure and steadfast anchor. It'll hold the course. It'll keep you on track when the waves are coming for you. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm and steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labour in the Lord is not futile, never wasted, or to no purpose. Pose the question, if you could find something that had certainty and no risk of failure, shouldn't you put all your eggs in that basket? Well, hallelujah, we found the greatest certainty, the only certainty in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a short, steadfast anchor of the soul, as we said. When you put your eggs in the Lord's basket, don't be tempted to take some out. A little bit less of this, a little bit less of that. Take a bit out here, take a bit out there. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you start putting eggs in that basket, it never stops. Whether you're in the Lord 40 minutes, 40 years, or 50 plus years, whatever it is, keep putting eggs in his basket. Because if you do, when Jesus returns, guess what? He'll find you so doing. He's looking for people putting eggs in baskets. When he comes back, wouldn't it be great if the Lord came back and you were just in the middle of putting an egg in the basket and then he comes back and he goes, excellent, putting an egg in the basket. Keep going, keep moving, keep putting eggs in the basket. And all the people said, amen. Okay, Bobby.